Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the National Press Club. My name is Mick Rood, and I am treasurer of the club. I'd like to welcome club members and their guests in our audience today, as well as those of you who are watching on C-SPAN, listening on National Public Radio, or accessing it on the Global Internet Computer Network. Before introducing our head table, I would like to remind our members of some upcoming speakers. On Tuesday, October 3rd, former Secretary of State James A. Baker III will address the press club. On Wednesday, October 4th, Willie Klaus, Secretary General of NATO, will be here. And on Friday, October 6th, paleoanthropologist Dr. Richard Leakey will talk about origins, politics, and a need for change, a broad topic, to say the least. Transcripts and audio and videotapes of Press Club luncheons are available by calling 1-800-NPC-2334. The club is also pleased to announce publication of a handsome new book, The National Press Club's Best Contemporary Speakers, a book containing uh, 13 of the best speeches made during 1994. I hope that number isn't unlucky. To order a copy of the book, uh, call 1-800-NPC-2334. If you have any questions for our speaker, please write them down on the cards that are at your tables and pass them up to me. I will ask as many as I can. Now I would like to introduce our head table guests and ask them to stand briefly while their names are called. Please hold your applause until I'm finished. From your right, Jim Landers, Dallas Morning News, Brooke Stoddard, a freelance journalist, Andrew Alexander, Deputy Washington Bureau Chief of the Cox Newspapers, and also President of the Friends of the National Journalism Library here at the Press Club, Alfred Moses, U.S. Ambassador to Romania, Andrew Mosier, Assistant Foreign Editor of the Washington Post, Ambassador Traian Cabello, advisor and spokesman to President Iliescu. Skipping over the president, our speaker today, Ambassador Ion Goritza, Romanian ambassador to the United Nations and charge de faire en pied. Christy Wise, a freelance journalist and a member of the National Press Club Speakers Committee who arranged today's luncheon. Hiro Koyoki, Washington Bureau Chief, Nikkei Newspapers. Robert Ritter, Editor, Gannett News Service. Ken Dolecki, Kiplinger, Washington Editors. And Lambros Papandonia, Balkan News and East European Report. I would like to take, go right ahead. I'd like to take this chance to thank staff members Melissa Bender, Pat Nelson, Melanie Abdu Dermot, and Howard Rothman for working on today's luncheon. It is my great pleasure to introduce Ion Iliescu, President of Romania, the country's first elected president. He is leading his nation through historic economic, social, and political change as Romania shifts from nearly 50 years of communist rule to a more democratic political system and a market-driven economic structure. President Iliescu uh, was the main author of the Declaration of December 22, 1989, a blueprint for Romania's political and social change, which he read over national television and radio in the early hours of the revolution. The president headed the first uh, post-communist body of state power and the Provisional Council until after free elections in May of 1990. His political program includes national reconciliation, transition to a market economy, continuation of economic reform, a national strategy for, de for development, and Romania's integration with Europe and openness to the world, an ambitious agenda. President Iliescu's uh, 
long-standing belief in democracy at times has carried a high price. In 1971, after serving six months as secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party in Romania, he was accused of supporting democratic thinking and intellectual devi deviationism, removed step by step from the political scene and kept under strict surveillance. For his courage to defy Romania's communist dictator, he became known, uh, known among uh, wi wider professional and social groups in Romania and abroad. Even as a young man, he believed in democracy, joining several uh, other students in founding the Union of High School Students Associations of uh, Romania in 1948, based on democratic principles. The group was dissolved by the authorities for, quote, neglecting class criteria, unquote. The president has a degree in electrical engineering, specializing in water management and ecology. He began his professional career in 1955 as a researcher at the Energy in Engineering Institute in Bucharest. President Iliescu uh, has a, a strong professional interest in environmental issues and is a member of the Club of Rome. He has authored uh, many books and numerous articles and essays and been distinguished with the French Legion of Honor. The president is married to Elena Iliescu, uh, an engineer and researcher in the field of metal corrosion. Our guest speaker loves literature, we are told, opera, modern art, and sports. Before I officially introduce the president, we have a short ceremony to take care of. Mr. President. <clears throat> I believe you want to present us with the flag of your country, is that correct? Yes. And this will go with our display in the front lobby. You may have seen the flags that hang out there. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Today, today we celebrate the generous donation of this flag into the permanent display at the club. For years, the National Press Club has been home not only to local and national journalists, but journalists from around the world who come over to cover events in Washington. Over time, a tradition has developed whereby embassies donate their national flags to the club. And when I said it would be put out in the lobby right away, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> We're delighted to add the flag of Romania. So now please join me in a warm National Press Club welcome for the Romanian president, Ion Iliescu. I thank you very much, all of you, for your presence. And uh, I thank you for uh, your kind words addressed to Romania and uh, to me uh, personally. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I am very glad to be with you in Washington today. I see my presence here at the National Press Club as an important event, not only for myself, but also for the Romanian-American relations in general. After the meeting with President Clinton and distinguished members of the House and the Senate, I am confident that our bilateral relations have entered a new stage, one of fast developing and intensive cooperation in all fields, from political to military, and from economic to cultural and human relations. There is also a specific reason to be pleased for being here. Starting today, Romania's independent media, the private-owned television network Antena One, joined the Select Club of National Press. I can say that we have now two ambassadors in Washington, one appointed by the government and another one that has the credentials of our open society, a society in which the press is taking very seriously its role 
as the fourth pillar in the democratic structure of power. In Romania, as in the case of other Central European nations in transition, the press is playing a decisive role in defining a new social contract for our political culture. Each day, the media fashions our view of events, government programs, expectations, and disappointments. Romania is reputed of having an image problem. And I was told many times that something should be done about that, not only here in the United States, but also back home in Bucharest. My personal approach is to consider that between any government and an independent press, there is a natural interaction. This makes both the press and the government stronger and more aware of their obligations. The government has to work harder to explain and build support for its policy and to change when proven wrong. I would also say that when exercising its freedom, the press should be aware also of its responsibilities because of its tremendous power to create images that for many people become reality itself. My conviction is basically that reality creates the image. There is no doubt that uh, the reality in Romania has changed dramatically in the direct direction of a democratic and market-oriented society. As our reality changes, new perceptions will follow. To give you some insights on the challenges of building a democracy from the ashes of a communist dictatorship, let me share with you some of the difficulties we face in rebuilding our country and its fundamental institutions, creating a state based on the rule of law, respect for fundamental human rights, and market economy. What strikes me sometimes when people complain about Romania <coughs> and its slow pace of reform is how easily people tend to forget the difficult conditions of our start. Less than six years ago, Romania was still hostage to a Stalinist-inspired personal dictatorship. Political association, free elections, freedom of speech, human rights, or any other basic democratic values, if only mentioned in public would have landed a person in jail, if not worse. Romania experienced a hyper-centralized economic system, where each and every asset was state-owned and nothing could move unless previously approved by a central body. To make it worse, structural dysfunction bad management, and an unparalleled economic effort to repay all foreign debts in the late 80s kept Romania away from technological and industrial progress, from foreign financial assistance and investment. It is not by accident that Romania experienced an explosion at the end of 89 rather than a velvet or peaceful revolution, like in other so-called socialist countries, including the former Soviet Union. At that point, the crisis reached its climax. The fall of the communist regime only created conditions to address those problems. It did not answer to them. After December 89, we had in our hands a structural crisis in both economic 
and political terms. To deal with the situation, we had to rebuild from scratch the political institutions of our state, to begin creating a market economy led by the private sector, to foster condition for an open society, and last but not least, to strategically change our foreign policy. But once started, the tide of reform was not to be stopped. After 89, we were the first country in Central Europe to have a new constitution approved by a new freely elected parliament and by a national referendum. Romania is therefore the only country in the region to have two round free elections in three, uh, six years, both parliamentary and presidentially, as well as the local elections. Although one might hear stories about incompletely reformed institutions in Romania, there is no single party or political organization that has complained about its freedom of expression and or organization. I would like to add a special note here on political representation of minorities in Romania. We are certainly not the only country in Central Europe to have 10% of our total population belonging to different ethnic minorities. Hungarians representing about 7%, uh, but also Germans, Greeks, Turks, Jewish, Italians, Ukrainians, Bulgarians, and other, other making up the rest. However, only in Romania do all ethnic minorities have local and parliamentary representation and political parties even. On the economic side, prospects are encouraging. With the assistance of the IMF and the Old Bank, we have been successful in achieving macroeconomic stabilization and economic growth after experiencing four years of continued decline in industrial output that in 93 reached a drastic reduction of about 50%, even below 50%, of the level of 89. This year will be the third year of economic growth, still on a small scale. Gross national product increased 3.4% last year. Inflation is down. Unemployment is under 10%. Industrial output is up this year about 5% and so in agricultural productions, with the wet, uh, wheat crop close to 8 million tons, or about twice our internal consumption. It is important because uh, <clears throat> maybe the most dramatical uh, expression of this decline of the Romanian economy in the post-revolutionary uh, period was the obligation of Romania to import wheat during three years, 91, 92, 93. It expressed this decline of uh, our uh, economic uh, activity, Romania being a traditional exporter of uh, cereals, of agricultural products, and maybe after France, Romania being the second concerning the natural conditions for uh, a good, for uh, uh, a productive uh, agri uh, agriculture. This year, the private sector will contribute 37% to the GNP and will employ more people than the state-owned business, no less than uh, 500,000 small and medium-sized private enterprises have sprung up in the last five years. The mass privatization process started in 93, 
has been strongly accelerated by a new law recently enacted by Parliament under which about 4,000 enterprises will be privatized by the end of the next year. Our greatest obstacle in this process is the lack of capital. We count very much on attracting foreign capital and on foreign investments generally. Last year, we attracted over $600 million of foreign capital, but much more is needed. I met this morning with more than 150 business representatives here in Washington under the auspices of the OPIC to talk about American investments in Romania and on Friday I shall meet another group of chief executive officers of major corporations who are joining me and the Secretary Brown for lunch to discuss prospects for important American investments in Romania. There is still a lot more to be done, but I see that today Romania is becoming an attractive market and with a sound growing economy. Last but not least, our foreign policy was designed from the very beginning so that Romania could regain its place in the larger family of democratic European and Euro-Atlantic nations where it belongs by virtue of its historic origin, its culture and its social values. Membership in the Council of Europe the association treaty with the European Union and an official request for full membership submitted earlier this year a status of associations with Western European Union and finally and most important and closer cooperation with NATO aiming at nothing less but full membership are today the strategic objectives in our foreign policy. As anyone can see, Romania proved not only its potential, but also its ability to make that potential become a valuable asset for enhanced security in an expanded Atlantic alliance. Ladies and gentlemen, some people might say this is not enough after six years, but they forget that Romania went through tremendous political and social changes in becoming a respected member of an even larger community of democratic countries where political pluralism, respect for human rights and freedom of speech are fundamental values. The course we have taken towards democracy, market economy and integration in the institutions of the democratic countries is irreversible. Romania today looks increasingly to America, the country that best represents the ideals of, freedoms, of freedom and democracy. We are grateful to the administration and to the US Congress for the support they have given so far to Romania. US assistance, primarily through the SEED program, has enabled Romania and other countries in the region to move ahead with democratic reform, privatization, and improvement in the quality of life for our citizens. U.S. is helping us to implement an ambitious capital market reform program. Your Treasury Department is assisting us in the financial area with bank reform and in adoption modern tax laws. U.S. grants to Romania are assisting us in a wide range of areas such as modernizing the national railway system, improving the Bucharest subway, and adding communication and safety features of our airports. The Peace Corps is also active in Romania with 70 volunteers. Other programs support Romanian media, education, agriculture, and health services. After the restoration of the MFN clause for Romania, two years ago, trade with the United States has doubled. 
<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me share with you not only our problems, but our aspirations as well. It is my firm belief that our official visit in the United States, consolidating the present positive cars of Romanian-American relationship, will mark the beginning of a strategically important partnership for peace and development. I would also like to see this visit adding substantially to a better understanding of Romanian problems and to the correct perception of the extraordinary efforts made by the Romanian people for the modernization of their country. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, but I, I have kind of a trick question for you. Would Romania be better off with the re-election of President Clinton or the election of Bob Dole, the election of Phil Graham, or the election of Colin Powell? Allow me not to enter into internal affairs of the United States. <laughs> and a graceful ex escape. Uh, obviously, the political systems of our two countries are, are quite different. Uh, I understand Romania has more than 200 political parties. How does the legislature get anything done? You know, we have to understand the, this uh, as an objective reaction of the Romanian society after a long uh, period of the totalitarian regime when there was not the possibility to express the diversity of options, of opinions, and so on. And as a reaction, immediately after the revolution, there was an explosion of the apparition of di uh, different parties. We have uh, setting up in December, immediately in the night of 22, uh, the first provisional structure of the uh, state uh, leadership the National Salvation Front and the Council of this Front. After a month, during the January 90s, already 30 parties were organized. We have uh, took the measure to enlarge this provisional institution of the state and we, ha we have created the uh, Provisional Council for the National Unity. Uh, asking all the parties to enter this uh, body. And we had a political decision of the representative of all these parties. In nine, nine days, we uh, uh, have organized the first meeting uh, of uh, this new uh, body. During nine days, new nine parties did appear. So in the council, 39 party entered at uh, that time. So it was I think a normal uh, expression of it, and it is not only for Romania. It was the same in Spain. It was the same in Japan. In Japan, uh, uh, some uh, friends said me that after the war they had about 300 uh, parties. In Spain, about 250. Of course, it will be uh, a process of uh, the settlement of all these uh, political relations. It was the same with the press. We had a very small number of the central uh, papers, uh, central and uh, local papers. There was an explosion during the January of the apparition of uh, new newspapers. Uh, we had uh, more than 1,000 and a half uh, new newspapers, and some joke uh, did appear that we have more newspapers than journalists. <coughs> So I think uh, Romania will follow the same experience and the others concerning the some polarization of uh, main uh, political trends and option and uh, the consolidation uh, of uh, big uh, parties. And we in the United States only speculate about a third party. <laughs> Many journalists, while assured that freedom of information and freedom of the press is better than it was in Romania, are worried that the government is not willing to allow a free media. Can you respond? 
Yeah, I think uh, you have here even uh, Romanian uh, journalists, you can discuss directly with them. I don't think there is any limitation concerning the free uh, apparition and uh, the free expression in the press. Concerning the mass media, I think in Romania there is not uh, any governmental control to TV or radio stations, even less than in France or even in Britain. In Hungary, you, you have the public uh, uh, TV under the governmental control, which is not the case of Romania. From 91, we uh, uh, approved uh, new legislation. The uh, TV public uh, uh, station and radio station, these two institutions, are under the control of the parliament. Now the parliament is discussing uh, the uh, uh, administrative bodies of two institutions and the denominations of uh, two presidents of them. No uh, governmental implication in it. And a part of it, maybe Romania is the country in the zone with the most developed uh, network of private uh, TV and radio station. I don't know uh, now exactly the, uh, the figure, but more than 30 or 40 private uh, local uh, TV stations are uh, uh, in the country and more than 100 or, or uh, un 150 radio stations on, on the private base without any uh, control. Uh, could you address uh, what I believe is, is still a proposal, uh, a libel law under which one could be jailed for, quote, malicious libel? No, there is only the discussion now in the Parliament concerning uh, uh, the Code Penal. Penal Code. Contain the Penal Code and uh, some measures uh, against uh, uh, offenses uh, to the state institution. And there is such a provision. Uh, they the call from uh, the representatives of the press to the president uh, who have uh, the duty to uh, promulgate or not uh, uh, the laws, not to promulgate this uh, provision of the law. It is a question to the president. I believe there are some other proposals, uh, including imposing jail terms for singing non-Romanian national anthems and flying non-Romanian flags. Would you, do you plan to sign this law? It is not a big, I think, problem, but uh, with some uh, significance for Romania, and you, and you have to take into consideration the historical background of some uh, sensibilities in Transylvania, where some uh, nationalistic Hungarian organization is appearing every uh, time with the uh, Hungarian flags, which uh, is uh, given to Romanians uh, many uh, uh, reactions uh, to it. And there is uh, such a provision that uh, normally, uh, in official occasion, only the national uh, flag uh, of Romania will be done. But when there are the national uh, uh, ceremonies of uh, different other states, of course, uh, the flags uh, of these states will be uh, presented. It's not a problem. Uh, it was reported uh, that following your meeting with President Clinton yesterday, the United States expressed its view that the, the White House's attitude towards most favored nation status is conditioned on, among other things, uh, fair treatment of Romania's two million Hungarians, uh, uh, the Hungarian minority. Uh, what concrete steps do you propose uh, to uh, treat the uh, minority uh, more fairly? It was not an item of our discussion with uh, President Clinton, and uh, the administration has uh, a very open uh, statement concerning the MFN status on a permanent basis. We consider uh, it as a necessary step. I have mentioned that uh, two years before when uh, the trade agreement between Romania and the uh, United States was approved by uh, the Congress, 
already it was a very positive sign for the uh, business uh, circles. And uh, the amount of commercial, of trade relations between uh, Romania and the United States doubled only in these two years. And also uh, the presence of uh, the American companies to invest in Romania also is uh, uh, a positive uh, signal, but all of them are interested to have the perspective and to have on the permanent basis the MFM. I don't think that, that there is any problem concerning uh, the uh, Hungarian minority in Romania. Uh, it is an item on which we could uh, discuss uh, uh, very long, but I think that the legislation of Romania, the constitution and other laws, and the political practice is the most liberal in connections with uh, national minorities. And in particular, the Hungarian minority, which is the most uh, important between uh, others, they have all the possibilities. They, are, they, are, they have their political representation in the parliament and in uh, local council. They have their network of, school, of schools on all degree in the mother tongue. They have uh, all sorts of uh, cultural, uh, uh, artistic institutions, uh, their papers, their theaters, and so on. The question which you shall not find in Hungary for the, their own minorities not only for Romanians, but even for Germans, for Slovaks, for Croats, and so on. They have a double language on it. The minorities uh, in uh, the territory of other uh, countries, and uh, particularly the uh, Hungarian minorities, and the minorities in Hungary. After the first old war with the uh, Trianon Treaty, there was mentioned about 250,000 Romanians on the territory of Hungary. Now they are speaking about 10,000 uh, only. The only school for Romanian is in one locality where the only discipline uh, studied in Romanian is the Romanian language. So the Romanian language is studied as a foreign language. And it is the same for many other minorities. But I think everyone has its own rules in the country. In France, for instance, the notion of uh, uh, minority does not exist. Uh, the nationality does not exist, this conception. The citizenship is the, most, uh, the only cr criteria. He can be a Negro from Senegal, becoming a cit uh, uh, citizen of uh, France. He is a French, French uh, nationality. We have another approach to it taking into consideration our historical background, our historical uh, uh, development. But uh, I think there is not a problem from uh, the concrete uh, point of view, and the simple people is coexisting uh, in a very good uh, condition. There are uh, the politicians which are creating uh, artificially many problems, but of course there are sensibilities we have to take into consideration. For many centuries, Transylvania, which was the basis for the Romanians, the Romanians are one of the oldest peoples in Europe. Two thousand years before, there did exist already. It is not policy. Eh? <laughs> What is the time, yeah? Mr. President, uh, pardon our faulty fire alarm system. <laughs> so, it's okay. did exist already an organized state, so the high level of the social organization, and the Romans had to fight through two wars to conquer uh, Decia and to organize uh, the colony, Roman colony, Dacia Felix. The political center of the Decian state and the political center of the Roman colony was in Transylvania. Alba Iulia, it's a Latin uh, denomination of the capital of uh, Dacia Felix. So you can understand the sensibility of Romanians being one of the oldest nation and people in Europe. When other peoples came from 
Asian uh, uh, territories in Europe, between them the Hungarians, who have set up uh, their organization, their state organization, and then this province, Romanian province Transylvania, entered under the domination of Austro-Hungarian Imperium. And the national fight of Romanians for uh, self-determination, uh, and only after the first old war, under this platform of Wilson, self-determination of the nations in Europe, new national states did appear. Between them, for the first time, the national state of Hungarians, Hung Hungary. The uh, state of Austrians, Austria. And Romanians being the majority in Transylvania, united themselves with other Romanians from other provinces, Wallachia and uh, Moldavia and uh, the Romanian modern uh, united uh, state was uh, formed. So you can understand the both sensibilities. From one side, the Romanians, which are very sensitive to any uh, attempts to uh, revisionistic uh, uh, attempt of uh, Hungary. And it was the experience of 40s under the pressure of Hitler and Mussolini when a half of Transylvania was occupied. And uh, from this reason, some reactions from the part of uh, sensitive Romanians. You have understand also that, uh, the position and the sensibility of Hungarians. Being a minority in uh, Transylvania, they had some uh, uh, status of dominating nation. The majoritarian, the Romanians, did not have any political right, any civil right. They did not have the possibility to be uh, represented in the of Transylvania. To enter the cities, to have their schools. Uh, but uh, uh, and there was a principle of uh, Middle Age uh, uh, law, Unio Trium Nationum, only three nations were recognized, Germans, Hungarians, and Sekels. It's a branch uh, of all the Hungarians. So this is one aspect concerning the sensibilities of Romanians, but for Hungarians also. They were the privileged, the dominating uh, nation, and after the reorganization of the states, after the first old war, they became a minority. It was a psychological shock. It is the shock you can uh, find now to Russians in uh, all of these former Soviet republics. They were the dominating nation, now they are a uh, minority in Baltic countries, in Ukraine, in, in other uh, republics. It was the same with uh, French people in uh, Algeria. Le département du Tremer, uh, uh, French territory, uh, over oversee. They did not accept the idea of the independence of Algiers. It was the same uh, psychological shock, and we have to take into consideration these objective factors in judging the settlement of the relations between uh, different uh, parts of the population. That question clearly had your interest. <laughs> Uh, you, you mentioned uh, a few mo moments ago uh, uh, U.S. investment in Romania. I have a few questions on economics. Why should U.S. investors choose to do business in Romania? What are the most important reasons why they should want to, uh, uh, as opposed to doing business in other East European countries? We have discussed these matters also with the businessmen, which understand very well their interests. I think uh, Romania is interesting uh, for uh, many reasons. In the Central Europe, is the second uh, country after Poland, with 23 million uh, population, with very uh, interesting and important resources, natural resources, with uh, a high uh, developed level of the education of uh, the population and uh, mainly of the young people, uh, quite uh, competitive with the developed European uh, countries. And the geostrategic position of Romania in the center of the Central Europe, if you uh, regard the map of Europe from Atlantic to Ural, you could see Poland, Romania being just in the center. 
Poland to the north, uh, Romania to the south, uh, with the Black Sea and the Danube. It is a new entrance, a new gate to Europe from Middle East. Romania has this position in interconnections with Central and Western Europe, with the former Soviet space, Russian Ukrainian space, and with the Middle East. So it is a, a very interesting position, not only for the Romanian market, but uh, for this position with all these interconnections. Many companies, uh, Americans, are uh, present in the Middle East, in uh, the oil uh, product, uh, pr producers' countries. We have uh, big capacities of refineries, which could uh, be used even uh, by uh, the Americans. I could say that it is one of the field of common interest. Romania was the first European country starting uh, the exploitation of the oil resources. And I don't know who, uh, who, uh, what was the first uh, place in the world, Romania or, or the United States. I could uh, uh, reproduct, uh, re reproduct to you uh, one, uh, uh, not joke, but uh, a real uh, question. In the second half of the last century, in the Romanian parliament, one congressman did raise the problem to the government. If uh, it is real, the information, that a new nation uh, did surpass Romania in the production of oil, this new nation of the United States. Uh, now, turning to uh, a neighbor of yours, uh, how would you assess the economic and political situation in Russia? Are you concerned about instability in that country? I think the United States also is concerned with the stability or non-stability in Russia. You can understand our position from this point of view as being uh, uh, very near to the Russian space and to Russia and uh, that instability in Russia uh, could affect uh, the stability of our zone, but not only of the Europe and of the world. So we are, uh, of course, preoccupied uh, about the evolution in Russia and uh, uh, directly interested uh, for the stability of the processes of uh, the political development, uh, uh, that uh, the Russia should be a democratic state and a member of the international community and to uh, develop their economy. It is a big country with the biggest uh, natural resources in uh, uh, the world. It is a big power and it is very important uh, to uh, realize uh, this stability. We are preoccupied because we understand very well that it is a big system, uh, a big uh, country. And in the theory of systems, the biggest is the system, the biggest is the inertia of these systems. So the change very difficult for us, uh, relatively small countries in the Central Europe are uh, multiplied by the uh, dimension of such a country like Russia, with a big diversity of the social, uh, intellectual, cultural level of different parts, region, uh, nations and nationalities composing uh, Russia and so on. And we understand that the process will be much more difficult for Russia to develop politically and uh, economically. For this reason, we are following, uh, and you are following also, uh, these uh, internal processes uh, of Russia, and we are, of course, uh, directly uh, interested and involved in this uh, process. As briefly as you can, could you uh, tell us what the status is of uh, Romania's uh, potential entry into NATO and the European Union? First of all, I could say to you that uh, from the political point of view, there is a common position of all political forces in Romania on this subject. Otherwise, uh, in Romania, like in the United States, there is uh, permanent uh, uh, contradictions on different issues of our development, internal situation, and so on. But there are some points in which there does exist a common approach 
and a common understanding. One of them is uh, our relations with the European institutions and Euro-Atlantic Euro institutions. We had some uh, uh, moments uh, of uh, consensus in this, in uh, discussing our integration in the European Union. Uh, we have participated as associated country uh, on December last uh, year in Essen, where the European Union uh, presented uh, to us a strategy of the preparation of associated uh, countries to enter the European Union. On this basis, we had a meeting with all the leaders of the political parties, 14 parties they are represented in the Parliament, and uh, uh, on uh, the consensus, we have created a national commission to elaborate the Romanian answer, the Romanian strategy for the entrance in perspective of Romania in the uh, European Union. And there was a large commission with uh, experts from all parties and researcher, uh, researchers in all fields, uh, macroeconomic, economy uh, of different uh, fields, sociologists, uh, and so on. And during four months, there was a, a large elaboration and a, a synthesis of such a national strategy was presented with a, a demand, official demand, to the European Union concerning uh, the entrance in perspective in the European Union. These documents were supported by common political declaration of all parties. All uh, 14 uh, representatives, the leaders of uh, the party, signed this document uh, together with the president, uh, with the prime minister, and the two presidents of, of uh, the chambers. It's the same with uh, NATO. Concerning NATO, we appreciated very much the approach of the United States on this subject. Because you know very well in the last uh, years, there were different discussions concerning the enlargement of NATO and how to do it. In, and some preferences to be done to uh, uh, one country or to uh, uh, another. Uh, in Romania, uh, there was a, a general reaction to such an approach because uh, from the beginning it uh, introduced the elements of uh, uh, tensions and suspiciousness in different countries. Uh, for this uh, reason, we think uh, that uh, it is a very uh, delicate uh, problem and uh, the initiative of the United States concerning the partner partnership uh, for peace, open to all, without any uh, discrimination, was the better and the best way to approach this problem. And we are the first to sign the partnership for ship for peace, and we are participating actively in uh, this activity. It is the same in the European Union. We are associated member now, and we have discussed about this strategy. A uh, questioner wants to know what was uh, the event that caused your disagreement with your predecessor, the previous president? Did you and did you fear for your life uh, during those years of surve surveillance? You know, like, like many young uh, intellectuals uh, in Romania, and not only in Romania after the war, there was uh, the general uh, uh, adhesion to the anti-fascist movements and for a democratic development in Europe uh, generally. On this basis, I became uh, an active uh, militant in the uh, student and youth movement of uh, our uh, country. Then uh, I was even, uh, as you have mentioned, uh, the secretary of the Central Committee in the 71. But it was the moment of rupture. I could say that there was a period of the openness in Romania, which uh, was a pioneer in this position in the beginning of the 60s. If you remember, Romania was the only country from which the Soviet troops were retreat in 58. It was the mistake Khrushchev did not repeat more. But after this, during this period after the war, till the end of the 50s, there was a full control of the Soviet organs 
to uh, Romanian institutions by the uh, form of uh, advisors, uh, representatives of uh, the different uh, institutions in Romanian institutions, in plain uh, committee, in uh, different economic uh, ministers, in the Ministry for Interior, in the Army, and so on. After the retreat of the Soviet troops, also an agreement uh, was to uh, uh, eliminate this presence of the uh, representatives of the advisors of the Soviet uh, institutions. And uh, the 60s, uh, 60s marked uh, a very strong position of Romania. If you remember, in 64, there was a decision, political declaration of Romania against the Khrushchev plan to organize the so-called socialistic integration in the Comecom uh, uh, countries, with uh, some position concerning the respect to independence and sovereignty of all uh, uh, member uh, countries. It was a turning, turning point, and uh, some years Romania had the open uh, uh, policy concerning our relations with the Western country. Uh, Romania was the first to establish the diplomatic relations with the Western Germany. Romania was the only country we did not accept the idea to interrupt the relation, relations with Israel. There was a large development of our uh, relations in technology, in economy, in culture, and so on. And there was a period of the modernization of uh, our uh, technologies uh, in industry. And the point, uh, uh, the highest point of the intervention in Czechoslovakia, Romania has opposed, has protested against, but after this started a period of involution in the Romanian uh, politics. Ceausescu was afraid by the pressure from the uh, Soviets, and he uh, introduced a very severe control regime in the state. In 71, I was, and I answered directly to your question, I was in, the, in a delegation with Ceausescu in China and Korea. And he was uh, uh, enthusiastic uh, with the model of Kim Il-sung, because it was a very uh, strong controlled society. And we had a querel uh, on this question. I said, uh, why uh, such an enthusiasm? It is not a human society. I was uh, one year before uh, in a visit in Korea. During a week, I didn't have the possibility to have any human dialogue with anybody. Every uh, question was uh, answered with uh, some uh, extracts from the uh, thinking of the great uh, leader of uh, the country. I said it is not an European, it is not a modern, it is not a human uh, society. It was our moment of the break uh, between uh, us, and I was a spell from the political responsibilities. And the last five years, it is uh, the general level in Romania. What did you do in the last uh, five years before the revolution? In the last five years before the revolution, I was the director of the printing house for technical literature. Mr. President, we're about to go off the air, and I did want to ask you one final question. Uh, before I do, uh, I want to present you with a certificate of appreciation. Thank you very much. And a, a, a book of uh, very beautiful photographs taken by the late George Thames. Uh, he used to work for the New York, New York Times. It's called Eye on Washington. Thank you. And uh, before I ask the final question, uh, please remain seated in the audience for just a few minutes. Uh, so that the pr president can leave unimpeded, and I don't know how I could forget giving you our National Press Club coffee mug. <laughs> <laughs> now, very quickly, uh, will if Romania... You me, if you allow me as a response to mm. your gift, it is a, a, a compact disc on Romania. Oh. Thank you very For much. National Press. Thank you very much. Uh, will Romania have a new gymnastic surprise at the Atlanta Olympics next year? A new Nadia Comaneci. Who knows, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much.
only for myself, but also for the Romanian-American relations in general. After the meeting with President Clinton and distinguished members of the House and the Senate, I am confident that our bilateral relations have entered a new stage, one of fast developing and intensive cooperation in all fields, from political to military, and from economic to cultural and human relations. There is also a specific reason to be pleased for being here. Starting today, Romania's independent media, the private-owned television network Antena One, joined the Select Club of National Press. I can say that we have now two ambassadors in Washington one appointed by the government, and another one that has the credentials of our open society, a society in which the press is taking very seriously its role as the fourth pillar in the democratic structure of power. In Romania, as in the case of other Central European nations in transition, the press is playing a decisive role in defining a new social contract for our political culture. Each day, the media fashions our view of events, government programs, expectations, and disappointments. Romania is reputed of having an image problem. And I was told many times that something should be done about that, not only here in the United States, but also back home in Bucharest. My personal approach is to consider that between any government and an independent press, there is a natural interaction. This makes both the press and the government Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the National Press Club. My name is Mick Rood, and I am treasurer of the club. I'd like to welcome club members and their guests in our audience today, as well as those of you who are watching on C-SPAN, listening on National Public Radio, or accessing it on the Global Internet Computer Network. Before introducing our head table, I would like to remind our members of some upcoming speakers. On Tuesday, October 3rd, former Secretary of State James A. Baker III will address the press club. On Wednesday, October 4th, Willie Klaus, Secretary General of NATO, will be here. And on Friday, October 6th, paleoanthropologist Dr. Richard Leakey will talk about origins, politics, and a need for change, a broad topic, to say the least. Transcripts and audio and videotapes of Press Club luncheons are available by calling 1-800-NPC-2334. The club is also pleased to announce publication of a handsome new book, The National Press Club's Best Contemporary Speakers, a book containing uh, 13 of the best speeches made during 1994. I hope that number isn't unlucky. To order a copy of the book, uh, call 1-800-NPC-2334. If you have any questions for our speaker, please write them down on the cards that are at your tables and pass them up to me. I will ask as many as I can. Now I would like to introduce our head table guests and ask them to stand briefly while their names are called. Please hold your applause until I'm finished. From your right, Jim Landers, Dallas Morning News, Brooke Stoddard, a freelance journalist, Andrew Alexander, Deputy Washington Bureau Chief of the Cox Newspapers, and also President of the Friends of the National Journalism Library here at the Press Club, Alfred Moses, U.S. Ambassador to Romania, Andrew Mosier, Assistant Foreign Editor of the Washington Post, 
Ambassador Tran Cabello, advisor and spokesman to President Iliescu. Skipping over the president, our speaker today, Ambassador Ion Goritza, Romanian ambassador to the United Nations and charge de faire en pied. Christy Wise, a freelance journalist and a member of the National Press Club Speakers Committee who arranged today's luncheon. Hiro Koyoki, Washington Bureau Chief, Nikkei Newspapers. Robert Ritter, Editor, Gannett News Service. Ken Delecki, Kiplinger, Washington Editors. And Lambros Papandonia, Balkan News and East European Report. I would like to take, go right ahead. I'd like to take this chance to thank staff members Melissa Bender, Pat Nelson, Melanie Abdu Dermot, and Howard Rothman for working on today's luncheon. It is my great pleasure to introduce Ion Iliescu, President of Romania, the country's first elected president. He is leading his nation through historic economic, social, and political change as Romania shifts from nearly 50 years of communist rule to a more democratic political system and a market-driven economic structure. President Iliescu uh, was the main author of the Declaration of December 20. The president is married to Elena Iliescu, uh, an engineer and researcher in the field of metal corrosion. Our guest speaker loves literature, we were told, opera, modern art, and sports. Before I officially introduce the president, we have a short ceremony to take care of. Mr. President. I believe you want to present us with the flag of your country. Is that correct? Yes. And this will go with our display in the front lobby. You may have seen the flags that hang out there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Today, today we celebrate the generous donation of this flag into the permanent display at the club. For years, the National Press Club has been home not only to local and national journalists, but journalists from around the world who come over to cover events in Washington. Over time, a tradition has developed whereby embassies donate their national flags to the club. And when I said it would be put out in the lobby right away, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> We're delighted to add the flag of Romania. So now please join me in a warm National Press Club welcome for the Romanian president, Ion Iliescu. I thank you very much, uh, all of you, for your presence. And uh, I thank you for uh, your kind words addressed to Romania and uh, to me uh, personally. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I am very glad to be with you in Washington today. I see my presence here at the National Press Club as an important event no second, 1989, a blueprint for Romania's political and social change, which he read over national television and radio in the early hours of the revolution. The president headed the first uh, post-communist body of state power and the provisional council until after free elections in May of 1990. His political program includes national reconciliation, transition to a market economy, continuation of economic reform, a national strategy for, de for development, and Romania's integration with Europe and openness to the world, an ambitious agenda. President Iliescu's uh, long-standing belief in democracy at times has carried a high price. In 1971, after serving six months as secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party in Romania, 
He was accused of supporting democratic thinking and intellectual devi deviationism, removed step by step from the political scene and kept under strict surveillance. For his courage to defy Romania's communist dictator, he became known, uh, known among uh, wi wider professional and social groups in Romania and abroad. Even as a young man, he believed in democracy, joining several uh, other students in founding the Union of High School Students Associations of uh, Romania in 1948, based on democratic principles. The group was dissolved by the authorities for, quote, neglecting class criteria, end quote. The president has a degree in electrical engineering, specializing in water management and ecology. He began his professional career in 1955 as a researcher at the Energy in Engineering Institute in Bucharest. President Iliescu uh, has a, a strong professional interest in environmental issues and is a member of the Club of Rome. He has authored uh, many books, numerous articles and essays, and been distinguished with the French Legion of Honor. <laughs> 